everyone, welcome to Phoenix Tech. Today we're gonna to be checking out the Rode Wireless Go. You can see I've got it on my shirt right now with the attached wind muff. I'm doing something a little bit different today. I'm filming outdoors. Now there's some construction going on across the road where I live. There's a lot of planes going on overhead. There's birds chirping, there's wind going, so it's very harsh conditions. And I really wanna see how this thing holds up outside. The timing of this thing for me just couldn't have come out at a better time. I was currently using some boom microphones or I had a Shure SM7B, which I was hand holding. So I was already in the market for a wireless microphone. I saw that Sennheiser had brought out some new products. There was a few other bits and pieces, but as soon as I saw this ad for the Rode one, I was sold. I was like, give me that one. I know Rode's gonna be delivering quality. Good price point, small form factor, rechargeable batteries, everything you'd want out of a modern microphone. So as soon as I could get my hands on it from a local retailer here in Australia, I picked one up. Now this unit is kind of two things in one. Of course, it's a wireless microphone that you can just pop on your shirt like this, but you can actually just plug in your existing lav mics if you've got one. So if you've got a high-end lav mic, you can just wear this as a belt pack. It's got an input, and then you can transmit that straight to camera. I'll just go through the features and specs of this Rode Wireless Go. So it's a super tiny unit. It weighs 31 grams, and size-wise, it's four and a half centimeters squared. If you've ever dealt with audio and cameras direct before, you know some cameras input can run a little bit hot. So on the Rode Wireless Go, they've got a zero dB, a minus six, and a minus 12. Both the transmitter and the receiver has inbuilt chargeable batteries, and they recharge via USB-C. The battery life lasts for seven hours and they're saying it takes two hours to charge. Also, if the thing completely dies in a pinch, you can charge them on the go with the USB-C power pack. Now, Rode's saying this is their all new wireless technology here. It's 2.4 gigahertz, that's what the connection runs on, but it's apparently constantly scanning for the best signal. So sometimes if you're in a crowded space, it can really jam up the frequencies because there's all these other devices going on. In the background, this thing's constantly scanning, constantly pairing, trying to get you the best connection possible. Uh, the range on this thing is 70 meters. I'm just out here filming on my balcony. I mean, I can just walk around and do a bit of a test here. Uh, maybe three meters away, five meters away, completely out of frame. I guess this is even a bit of a test for me. I'll see how the audio scrubs up, but I'll just come back here and we'll see. Hopefully there hasn't been any dip in audio, but yeah, uh, 70 meters, plenty for me. I'm mainly trying to use this indoors in a studio, even some uh, light filming out here. So, you know, if it all holds up as it says it is, this is really a fantastic option. So this is the Rode Wireless Go with the wind muff. Now, I think it looks fairly obvious. I don't really like the look that this has here. I think if I was ever gonna use this wind muff, I would maybe wear two shirts to try and cover it up or I'd wear a jacket and sort of hide it. So let me just take this uh, wind muff off now and we'll see what it looks like without it. See, I think even for me when I'm wearing the Rode Wireless Go, I'd wear it in this kind of framing. So right now it doesn't have the wind muff on there. I'll just take a step back. I think on a black shirt, it's actually pretty seamless. Step back here, see what that looks like. Yeah, so, um, you know, in the right scenario, it looks pretty invisible. If I was really, really concerned about it, I could pick up a lav mic and just plug this in and use it as a belt pack. But I don't mind filming these videos with a little bit of uh, Rode swag on there. One of the complaints some people had is that the clip actually says Rode. So, you know, if we were to pause this and zoom in hard enough, you'd be able to see Rode. If that really concerned you, you could just put some black masking tape over it, but not too concerned about that. So let's run through some tests with the Rode Wireless Go. I'll take the wind muff off and on. I'll also wear a jacket as well as this shirt. I'll show the audio pre-processing as well as post-processing, and I'll also chuck in my Shure SM7B to see how this comes up against a wired microphone. The wind muff is on. This is what the Rode Wireless Go sounds like, just clipped onto a shirt. The wind muff is on. This is what the Rode Wireless Go sounds like, just clipped onto a shirt. The wind muff is off. This is what the Rode Wireless Go sounds like, just on a shirt. The wind muff is off. This is what the Rode Wireless Go sounds like, just on a shirt. With the wind muff on, this is how the Rode Wireless Go sounds clipped to my jacket. With the wind muff on, this is how the Rode Wireless Go sounds clipped to my jacket. With the wind muff off, this is what the Rode Wireless Go sounds like clipped to my jacket. With the wind muff off, this is what the Rode Wireless Go sounds like clipped to my jacket. So I mean, even getting this other stuff out, it just seems like such a hassle. This is the, uh, the Zoom H6 audio recorder that I've got here. And I've got the uh, Shure SM7B, just with a little stand that I can uh, just pretty much hold. This is how I've been filming my other videos. I've been kind of just holding it down here. And uh, let's compare this audio against the uh, Rode Wireless Go. So this is actually such an impractical solution because in one hand I've got to hold this zoom because I've got no mounts or anywhere to put it and in the other hand I've got the, uh, the Shure SM7B. But anyway, this is a test of the Shure SM7B out here on my balcony. But anyway, this is a test of the Shure SM7B out here on my balcony. 
The only negative thing I can think is that I would have liked to seen multiple transmitters going to the one receiver. So that way if you're on set, you can mic up three or four people, have it run straight to camera. Uh, Rode is saying it's just a one-to-one -one link at the moment, so you have to have two units for you know every sort of scenario. I guess it kind of makes sense because if you're having uh, four audio sources coming to the one receiver, you need a way to mix that. Uh, maybe in the future they'll have like a super receiver where it does a little bit of mixing on the fly. But right now I've got a Zoom external audio recorder. I guess I can just go straight into that four track and do the mixing there. It's not the end of the world. It would have been nice to do with this, but that's the only real drawback I can think of with this unit. Price-wise, this set me back for 279 AUD, but they're going for 199 in the States. So I've owned this unit for a couple days now, shot a couple hours worth of footage to really test out the audio in different scenarios. I'm actually really, really happy with it so far. You know, it's not like a top end microphone, but it definitely is so much better than the cheap stuff I've used before. I would say don't even bother with those cheap systems, just save up the money and get this one. Rode have really priced this thing at a good price point. They're saying it's broadcast quality audio. I do a little bit of touch-ups in post and it really cleans up nicely. So far, I'm really, really impressed with this product and I hope to be using it for the next couple years. I did an unboxing of this, so stay tuned for that. You see all the bits and pieces you get in the gear. And this thing was really tough to undo. I had the knife, I was like cutting it. You can see me tearing away at it. I don't know why it was so tough, but anyway, stick around for that unboxing.
Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Smash that like and subscribe button. And if you check out my channel, I did a little ode to Camera Conspiracies. He was complaining about the Fuji X-T3 autofocus. So I just did a quick clip for him to show him how the autofocus can be on the Fujis. Thanks for sticking around and we'll catch you on the next video.